You've never had a fist fight? Never. You've never had a fist fight? Never. You've never punched somebody in the face? Never. Not even as a cop? No. Well. <laughs> <laughs> It ain't nothing like having your hard work pay off. We could be talking yeah. about a retired NFL player, Ronnie Coleman. Possibly. How did you know if you are making progress to be able to win if you're not taking a look at yourself? I was wild awake and the next minute I was waking up in the tub like, whoa, what happened? The DA came in and started questioning everybody. These are backstories, you know, that no one knows about. What do you think about when you see these guys? <laughs> I don't see it. When I was competing, everybody was like, whoa. There's no argument. Oh, it's too personal. You were losing your cool? No, I'm genetically gifted to do that kind of stuff. Ronnie, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think Flex had better shape than me. That's a big statement, Ronnie. Yeah, but you weren't there. You didn't see him. Well, he beat you in that show. He's sixth. What? See, we just learned something, <laughs> Ronnie. That's good. I think Arnold takes after Joe. Wow. I look like a little boy standing next to him. <laughs> and you really believe that? Yeah, I know that. I'm always trying to be better. Did you ever think you were made it? I feel I'm so close I could take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, why would you bet on Goliath when we got bet David? Value taming, giving values contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we get no value to haters. How they run, homie, look what I become. I'm the I'm the one. Today I have a special guest with me, eight-time Mr. Olympia, Ronnie Coleman. They call him the king. They call mm -hmm. him the strongest uh, Mr. Olympia ever. I think he was squatting 800 pounds three times. His biggest regret is he wishes he could have done it five times. He felt he could. Deadlifting 800 pounds, repping 500 pounds on bench press. Just one of the most beloved guys in the world of bodybuilding. His competitors love him. His peers love him. They didn't like losing to him, but they definitely loved him. And with that being said, today's guest, Ronnie Coleman. Ronnie, thanks for coming out, man. Oh, thanks for having me. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a pleasure having you. I know we've had Phil before. We've had uh, uh, Dorian Yates before. And then Curry and I said, we got, we got to get Ronnie. So you're out here now. Yeah, I actually did two reps on that. Uh, did you do two? Yeah. Paul, you told me three times. I told you two times. You correct me to three. I thought it was two times. I, 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 okay. I should have did five, though. You should have did. Six. Maybe six. You think you could have done five. Easy, easy. Easy. Yeah, yeah. I want to read something to you, and I want to see what you mm -hmm. say about this. Okay, this is, so you're an eight-time Astro Olympia. Mm -hmm. You know, in any sport you do, Kobe says one of his favorite parts of playing the game was the last year when he played, and he was going on his retirement tour. I don't know if you're a basketball guy. He was going on his mm -hmm. retirement tour, and every city was giving him the respect. Every city. And they said, how does this feel for you? He says, there is nothing more rewarding than knowing my competitors and my enemies felt this way about me at the end of my career. This is a, at, at the highest level of respect for him. So I want to read some of what the guys had to say about you and see what you think about this. This is what Lee Haney once said about you. Lee Haney is another eight-timer. Yeah, Both of you guys are eight-timers, and you have a lot of good things to say about him. He said, in the world of professional bodybuilding, the name Ronnie Coleman stands alone. There has never been an athlete physically able or willing to take the sport beyond the limits of human expectations. Ronnie did it to the extent that the sport may never witness again. That's what Lee Haney said. Mm -hmm. Here's what Arnold had to say. Ronnie became a whole new dimension. It was unbelievable. He showed bodybuilders that there was a whole other way of size and proportion. And your friend, Flex Wheeler, who was supposed to win Mr. Olympia the year you were competing <laughs> with him, everybody after Dorian says, it's Flex's time. Yeah. <laughs> he says, I don't have the ability to say that I was with Arnold or Lee, but I do have the ability to say that I was on the stage with the greatest Olympia of all time. When you hear me read this stuff to you from your peers, these are people you admired, came before you mm -hmm. during your time. Yeah. What does that make you think about? Oh, it, it, like you said, uh, Ain't nothing like respect from your fellow competitors, because uh, I had no idea that any of those guys had said another, that that stuff, you know, because uh, I really don't watch. <laughs> you don't really watch the media? No, nah, no, nah, I don't watch the media. I don't keep up with too much of nothing. How do you process it? I know you're pretty, one of the things I'd like to do today, Ronnie, is, is I'm hoping we can do this. And here's what my goal is with you. <laughs> 
I've watched your documentary. I read your book. I read as many articles as I could get my hands on. <laughs> I called your peers up. In, I want to know, Ronnie, because when I was in the Army, on the wall I had pictures. The year you placed uh, 16th, you know, the mm -hmm. year you placed 16th, I just liked your physique. When I saw your physique, I think it was in a uh, 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 muscle magazine. There was your uniform. You were in the cop uniform, and then they had a physique of yours, and you did your double buys, and it was muscle on top of muscles. I said, I, said, I just like this guy's physique. I don't know if he's ever going to do anything, but I like his physique. Yeah. And then you end up winning. So I, I'm, a, I'm not just a guy that uh, is interested in bodybuilding. You were a guy that I followed when oh, I was okay. in the Army. So that was like mid-'90s to late-'90s. I was yeah, following yeah. your, you know, you coming up and winning back-to-back-to-back to back to back eight times. But, but the one thing I'd like to do today is I feel like there's not been a real long-form interview with you outside of the documentary that mm -hmm. you did. And when I think yeah. about you and I see your interviews, I say, this is a guy that grew up in Louisiana, a nice guy, you know, man of faith. You can tell there's a lot of strong values and character that you can tell your mom played a very big role in your life. Jesse, mm -hmm. you can tell that there was certain people, Alonzo, that played a big role in your life. You can tell that there were certain people that impacted your life and certain life-changing events, whether it was Patricia, yeah. your high school girlfriend, when she broke up with you. And you kind of, and I know we talk about this all the time, that it's good to have that happen <laughs> early on. Oh, yeah. But I want to kind of know a different sign of Ronnie today. Like, I want to know, it, 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 does, do things hurt Ronnie? I want to know what Ronnie thinks about, what additional interests they have. So going back to this, when you hear these guys saying these things about you, emotionally, does it do anything where it's like, I can't believe these guys I admire say these kinds of things to you? Exactly. Does it get you to that state? Oh, uh, exactly. <laughs> I know you said, uh, you said one time, uh, there is no better feeling than being able to say, I'm a master overachiever. I have mastered being an overachiever. Yeah. Why'd mm -hmm. you say that? Why is that so important to you? Uh, well, because I've always <laughs> tried to be the best at everything that I have, I've ever done. And, <clears throat> and uh, once I've accomplished it, you know, it, it always took took a long, took some time, you know. Nothing, nothing happened happened over, overnight, so it ain't nothing like having your hard work pay off. Because you know, when I put myself uh, to a, a task of doing something, I go all out. You know, like when I worked for the police department, you know, I I went all out. You know, I tried to do the best job I possibly could. When I was in college, you know, when I was in <coughs> school, I. Uh, I studied every single night. Every when you were at Grambling or in high school? Grambling. Okay. No, not high school. <laughs> not high school. <laughs> I did not take high school seriously at all. But at Grambling, I studied every single night. And, you know, I tried to be the best I possibly could be. When I was playing football there, you know, I was trying to be the best I possibly could be. And, I, and, and you know, it took a long time, but I accomplished everything I wanted to accomplish. But, like I said, nothing happened overnight. It took me, like, Almost three years to start, you know. Took you three years to start. Yeah, took me three years to start. Uh, How good were me. you? I mean, I'm trying to see videos, but I couldn't find videos. The only video I found is uh, uh, another Ron Coleman who yeah, yeah, played yeah. football at Grambling. But I'm talking about how good were you in college? Were you a killer? Were you somebody that had the ability to go to the next level? Well, I had talked to some pro scouts, but uh, I never got drafted. So I felt like if if, if I wasn't good enough to get drafted, I wasn't good enough to play. That, that, that was just my attitude. Maybe if I'd have gone out there and gave it my all, you know, I probably could have made a team, but I didn't have that attitude. You know, everything is, is about desire and attitude and, and focus and everything. So if you don't have the desire, attitude, and the focus for something, then it's not going to happen. <laughs> so, so you know the game that you talk about in college where you said uh, uh, the, the scouts came from the Eagles and they're yeah. sitting out there, they're kind of watching you, and in that game you were nervous, but you ended up having like 14 solo tackles, two sacks, and an interception, and you had a big game. Yeah. And then afterwards you spoke to them. They told you, if you play like this, we're going to draft you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you were kind of going in the direction of possibly being an NFL player. Exactly. And was it the neck injury when you tackled the quarterback? Mm -hmm. That's when it was like over for you? Yeah, pretty much. So if that doesn't happen, we could be talking yeah. about a retired mm -hmm. NFL player, Ronnie Coleman. Possibly. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> uh, it, yeah. Did you have the love of the game for football the way you had the love of the game for bodybuilding? Uh, uh, I think one was greater than the other because I started actually bodybuilding. I mean... 12. <laughs> I didn't start playing football to like uh, 14, 15, somewhere in there. 
And uh, of course, you know, one I, I did forever. <laughs> one, one I continued and pursued, you know, uh, forever. And the other one I didn't, you know. Like I, like I said, I could have went out there and tried out and gave it my all, but I, did, I just didn't have that desire. But as far as working out goals, you know, I never, ever, ever stopped. <laughs> to this day, I, I started when I was 12 and I still hadn't stopped, you know, I, I, after what, 12 surgeries? So I'm still hanging in there with all the pain and everything. What, what is it about bodybuilding that gives you the love of the game? I mean, <laughs> it's like a hobby, you know, something like you really enjoy doing. Like some people like going fishing and hunting and all that stuff. I got a few friends that enjoy doing that stuff, but, but uh, uh, it, it's, it's just a hobby, something that I love to do. You know, I've, I've always done it my whole entire life and I always look forward to doing it. That's another, <laughs> people used to always ask me, how did I work full time for the police department? and do bodybuilding at the same time. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. told him I was doing two things that I love doing. If I could have done, if I could have done uh, police work until now, I would have. Really? Yeah. What I, do you love they about They forced me out. <laughs> I remember then, your 15th year when the boss sat down yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love going to work and ha doing something different every day and helping people. That, that was my, my main thing. I like helping people and I like doing something different every single day. You, you, never, you never know what's going to happen, you know. As you know, <laughs> it's a lot of things that can happen. That's true. <laughs> a lot of things. That is very true. There's <laughs> so many different things. What's the worst e thing everything. you saw? What did you see? What's the well, worst probably thing Probably the double homicide that I mentioned in the book, probably the worst thing I saw because, you know, <laughs> that day, that night, I was trying to get home on time, you know. I, that last thing I was thinking about, about was a real shooting because, that hardly ever happened in Arlington, you mm -hmm. know, especially where I worked and in, in the area that I worked. Uh, it wasn't a real bad area, nothing like, like that. So that that uh, really caught me off guard. I, I can still see image, images of that today. You know, that's something, something that, you know, stays with you for, forever, pretty much. You know, you walk in and see a thing like that. Totally unexpected. Something that you think would never happen, you know, and under the circumstances, of it, the way it happened, you know, it's just crazy. You know, you're trying to help somebody out and all of a sudden they use your own gun to kill you. <laughs> Never think something like that going to happen, you know. You know, you all, you're always hesitant to try to help somebody mm -hmm. out, some strange that you don't really know, but in a case like that, man, <laughs> should I always thought second about that one. Did that make you kind of second guess the career you chose, or no, 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 no? That no, wasn't the case. I still loved it. <laughs> still loved it. But let, let me let me ask that you. That was this. one of the things I loved about the job. You know? I, I remember when I was in the army. I loved my job being in the army. I remember when I was working at Hagen Dazs. I loved it. I remember when I was working at Valley Total Fitness. I loved it. When I worked at Morgan Stanley, I loved it. I loved, I loved going to work. Right? Do you think it's an attitude thing with you and love, or do you think it's like, you know, anybody that talks about your attitude, this man never complained, you don't talk behind, you know, you don't do this, you, it's just pure values, 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 mm -hmm. values, values. Is, is the love of the game because you love life or is love of the game specific to bodybuilding? Both. <laughs> Which Both part of bodybuilding you love the most? Oh man, I, working out. <laughs> what part of it? What what is it? What is it? Being really in the gym, be? working out, actually, just actually working out every day. Being and that, in the that gym. fires you up. Yeah, yeah. Why? Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, you know, the feeling I get from being able to work out and be healthy and uh, stay in shape, and uh, also look good. <laughs> to look good. <laughs> yeah. So how do you psychologically, for you, knowing your a person of uh, constant progress. I mean, you're running a, a, a nutritional company. You yeah. Know, I don't know what your top line revenue was last year, but I think you guys were doing 50 million a year a couple of years ago. I don't know what your 2019 is going to end up being. I'm yeah. assuming you guys are doing good. Yeah, we're doing really good. Okay. <laughs> so you got a business that's doing good. You got a brand that's doing good. You're a guy that's probably driven by seeing constant progress. Oh, yeah. How does somebody <laughs> like you psychologically, from being able to go from 12 years old to 13, 14, 15, 16, you know, 25, 30, 35, 40, you're seeing your body get mm -hmm. better and better and better. 
How are you psychologically handling, handling it today to know that if I go lift weights, I can't get, you know, the details that I had or I can't get above 850? Because sometimes, like, you know, the, the frustrating part about loving the game is you go and you say, oh my gosh, look at the traps are looking better. Look at my calves. I'm seeing some details I didn't have before. <laughs> and that goes away. Then where does the love of the game come? Is it the environment? Is it the sound? Is it the, <laughs> what is it? You ain't gonna believe this. Uh, I never looked at myself. Never looked at myself. Uh, it was all, all, always about being in the gym working out, enjoying myself and having fun and being healthy. It was never the way I looked. So when I was like, you know, 285, 295 on stage, I, I, I really didn't notice anything. What do you mean uh, when you When say I was that? 215, huh? What do you mean when you say that? I didn't notice it. <clears throat> so people, people saw the way I looked. I didn't see the way I looked until I saw pictures. <clears throat> so you wouldn't go in front of a mirror at the gym and pose? Nope, never. Ever. So when you're doing squats <laughs> and you're looking at something, there's not a mirror in front nope. of you, it's a wall? Nope. Seriously. There's no mirror there. If you, if you see, if you, look, if you look at the videos, you'll see there's not a mirror right there in front of me. <laughs> Have you ever talked about this before or no? Videos. Even Siri is confused. <laughs> Holy moly. Okay. Yeah, you, I don't understand videos either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but have you ever talked about this before where you never looked yourself in the mirror or no? No, no, no. There were, there were, there were times back when I was backstage and I see a mirror, I, I turn my head, you know, when I walk, walk past it because I didn't want to know how I looked. Because I wouldn't, I was never in it to, to look a certain way, you know. I was in it to be good and to be great, but not to look a certain way. That's, 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 why I, wow. I, that's why I was going to tell you now that, you know, the way I look back then, you know, that, that was all good and great, but I wasn't in it to, to look a, a certain way. I was in it to be great. Mm -hmm. So now that I'm not even competing anymore, I'm, I, I'm still the same way. I'm not in it to look a certain way. I'm in it just for, for, you know, the enjoyment of being in the gym, working out and being healthy. So I'm not going for a certain look. I've always just went into the gym to have fun and enjoy myself and, uh, you know, just be in there, but not to look a certain way. I didn't know I had 22-inch arms until somebody told me. And I argued them down, like, no, there's no way. He's like, well, I got to tape measure. You know, I can prove it to you. I'm like, let's bring it out. <laughs> so you know, he brought it out, and sure enough, 22 inches. I'm like, wow, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I got 22 inch arms, you know. Was, I was in college at the time. How much of this was the fact that you didn't like to boast and kind of brag because of values passed down to you, or how much of it is you? Where it's I, kind never, of like, I never boasted and bragged about anything because I, I, <laughs> everything comes from God, so, you know, it, it's nothing that I did, you know. I'm just the vessel, I'm just just here. Just uh, doing what I was put here to do, basically. I mean, so, you realize you're in a pretty vain I'm sport, not. though. <laughs> you're, in a, yeah. you're in a sport where yeah, it's about I, who it, looks it, the it, best. Everybody's different, you know. <laughs> everybody's different. That's so know. interesting to me. <laughs> so how, how did you know if you are making progress to be able to win if you're not taking a look at yourself? Uh, about what, what the uh, I place on stage. But how do you know pre? Like, how do you know when I, I'm reading I, I, a book and also, you're saying, I knew I was kind of getting ready to be able to win, and I know I was kind of looking, you know, how, how are you mentally? I, I, yeah, I had a nutritionist, you know, that prepared me and told me what to do and how to do it and everything. No, what I'm asking is, so let's just say you're, you're going to a show, you got a show coming up, you're mm -hmm. going up against somebody. H how do you know if you have what it takes to beat them if you're not looking at yourself? I don't know. That's, uh, they, that's the key. I don't know. I don't know until I get there. How do you feel about that? You like that approach? Yeah, yeah. I loved it. <laughs> Why? Because uh, I, you know, I've all, like I, like I was saying earlier, I've always prepared myself to be the very best that I possibly could be. And if I know that I'm the very best that I possibly could be, and I can't get any better at the time, huh. then I'm good with that. So every time I went into a show, I went in to win. You know, I never cheated or nothing. I always did what, uh, 
you know, I was told to do. Because I've always used, you know, uh, trainers and nutritionists and stuff like that to, to guide me. You know, I never really guided myself. Did, so did you have somebody that, about it did you have somebody that would say, Ronnie, your, your mm -hmm. uh, shoulders, you got to mm -hmm. work on this. You gotta, yeah. Who was that person? My, whoever was training me at the time, I used different trainers, you know, along the way. And they would tell you, this is mm -hmm. an area of weakness that you got to work on. Mm -hmm. And here's yeah. what we got to do. Yeah. Got it. So there was no mirror for you. You no. realize how confusing this is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're, you're I'm in very, a... I'm a very vain person. You're I'm a very never, vain person? I'm never satisfied with nothing, no matter how good I look. <laughs> I'm always trying to be better. Oh, you consider yourself <clears throat> confident or uh, the, where the oh, I'm drive... I'm very confident in everything that I do. So there's a, <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a level of insecurity where you're no, trying to drive no. for perfection. No. You're very confident in your ability to compete in the marketplace. <laughs> in everything that I do. <laughs> Did you ever have a love of the game for anything else that came close to bodybuilding and being a cop? No, nothing. Nothing? Nothing. So nothing gets your interest where you're like, wow, I'm really interested in this. Let me get mm -hmm. into it. Nope. Are you trying to find something else that would get that kind of interest for you or no? Mm-mm. -mm. Not at this age. <laughs> yeah, because I know you're good. You said you used to write for the, uh, uh, used to write back in the days. I when, used to write for the Gremlin. I knew. Yeah, paper, used yeah. to write then, I so you enjoyed writing. Editor, yeah. And you wrote this. Yeah. So writing mm -hmm. is something that you've uh, done. So. Yeah. yeah I, was, so uh, I took school real serious, you know. So when I took like an English class or an advanced comp class, uh, you know, I, I buried myself in the books and tried to learn every single thing I could about it. In, in college, you know, I was real, real good at it, <laughs> you know, because I was taking School? all those, yeah, I was taking all those courses like that to help with writing. Mm. So I was a lot better back then than I am than I than I am now because I was doing a lot more back then, you know. So what subject different. came easy to you? Were you a math guy? Were you math, a numbers guy? Uh, accounting, okay. math and accounting. Anything with numbers was real easy. I can still remember. You know, my old phone number from my home growing up, you know. You got a photographic memory? Or yeah, you I do. do. I okay. Do. <laughs> so you I would read uh, books and re just remember the whole thing. I, I'd have to read about three or four times. I could mem memorize the whole thing. That's, that's how I studied for college. I would read everything like three or four times over. Like the night before. I would stay up like sometimes all night. You know, you get, you know, you get... You get into something and you just get focused on it and you lose track of time because mm -hmm. you're so focused on what you're doing. That's you. And I would look up and I'm like, oh man, it's time to go to breakfast. I'm, I didn't get no sleep. <laughs> that, that happened a lot, you know, because like I said, I had that memory that if I read something enough, I could memorize it. You know, it's, it's so crazy that yourself, Brandon Curry, Phil Heath, all had accounting majors. Yeah, yeah. Did you know that or no? You, I had no idea. <laughs> you had no idea. All three of you are accounting. So maybe the formula for bodybuilding is first go get a degree in accounting and then go compete. Exactly. <laughs> that seems to be a trend. Yeah. Very Worked interesting. out real good. <laughs> so, so was a lot of your bodybuilding, were you a data guy? Were you all data or no? Was it like exact? I know in one of the interviews when somebody was asking you, what did you do to get rid of the gut? Because they said next year our judging is going to be, you got to get rid of the gut. And he said, you sat down and he spoke to Joe Weider. Weider and Weider told you to lower it from 15 uh, 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 ounces to 10 or 11 ounces or something like that? No, he, would, he gave me some exercise. Oh, he do. gave you the bell to put around yeah. it the entire time uh, and keep yeah, flexing yeah. it yeah. while you're driving. Yeah. But, but you, <clears throat> you said, I went from 15 ounces of, pro of chicken to 10 or 11. No, so no, no, no. You got it backwards. You went I higher? went from 10 to 15. No, you no. You said I in said the interview you went then. lower. Oh, so okay. Yeah. So you said in the interview you went lower. Yeah. We'll find it to put it up to, because I meant to say I, I, so I you went about, higher. Yeah, I went higher. But you stayed. You stayed My cut. Bad. You stayed Man, low body fat. I said that. <laughs> you I'm you stayed people. Instead of having like fourteen ounces of chicken, I'd have like ten. 12. And you did it all year round. I did it all year round. You said <laughs> low body fat throughout the year, though. Yeah, uh, it's genetically though, genetically it's like that. I, the police department used to always measure me, and it always came to two to two to three percent every single year. It's crazy. And this was off season. This three hundred and what twenty pounds. I went to Cooper's <laughs> Clinic one time and had it done. You know, professionally, it was point three three, not even a half percent. 
what is not healthy? I mean, what number is not? Because you remember, what was the one bodybuilder, Munzer, that he, he had a lowest where his chest just mm -hmm. didn't make any sense? Is there mm -hmm. a level that's actually not healthy for you? I don't No, There's not one. Not in your mind. Not in my mind. Not in your mind. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a different breed of yeah, guy. <laughs> and you really believe that? Yeah, I know that. You know that? Yeah. Are you a data analytics guy? Is it all data to you or no? Uh, yeah, it's all data and analytics. Cause that's you, people don't know, but you know, I I kept up with everything I ate. I I weighed and measured everything I ate, and I ate the same thing, and I weighed it, and you know, I knew exactly how many carbs I was taking, how many grams of protein I was taking, everything, and I wrote everything down. Do you have it till today? Yeah, I still have it today. Kept it till today. I still have it today. Wow. <laughs> By the way, is there Mr. Olympia a, a, a museum or no? Is there some kind of a museum that they keep or not? This is the kind of stuff that the audience would love to go see. Oh, uh, yeah, I can't show this. <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't want to share it with no one. No, no, no. Really? Oh, no. Why no. not? Oh, it's too personal. <laughs> Seriously, you wouldn't show what you ate? No, no, no. Come on, Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> You're being serious or are you being sarcastic? No, no, I'm being serious. You would not show what you ate? No, no. For what reason? Oh, there's some stuff in there that I, I don't even remember, you know. I, I had to go back and look at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the craziest thing you would eat. My, new, that, my nutritionist did everything for me. I got it. So I got it. I, I was doing what he told me to do. Did you eat anything crazy that people will be shell no, shocked No, no, by? no, no, no. Oh, okay. I, I, I ate... Uh, like four or five different food. I had chicken, steak, uh, turkey, grits. rice, and baked potato. Grits for breakfast. And grits, yeah, yeah, for breakfast. Baked potato. And then you would do your protein drinks that you're doing. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was simple stuff. How, how much of your advantage, because Dorian Yates says he had an edge because he trained at a regular gym back in UK, and he didn't have the distractions of the guys that were in LA training at Gold's Gym because every night you're going to party and then women and all this other stuff. How much of your advantage was the fact that you trained at a regular gym, you know, Metro Flex uh, right here in mm -hmm. Arlington? How much of it do you think was the fact that you're a pretty simple guy, not needing 50 different distractions? You think that was an edge of yours? Uh, yeah, because I didn't train at Metro Flex when I get ready for shows. I trained at home. I Why? Gotta, Why at home? I didn't want to be bothered. People always come into the gym one autographs and photos and stuff so it's the time for that and the time not for that the, the gym at the home does it have mirrors or no it it has a few so you see a little bit of your muscles I, i'm not really looking okay they just there you know as a you know decoration decoration <laughs> so when you're training for a stroll you're at a gym where no distractions you're by yourself mm -hmm. it's like your kingdom no one's bothering you exactly how uh, how annoyed would you be if somebody did bother you were you the kind of person where everybody in your life knew when i'm training don't bother me i'm pretty focused yeah it was that kind yeah mm -hmm. okay does anything piss you off or no does anything get under your skin oh yeah a lot of things that's when i work for the police department <laughs> <laughs> like what? What what irritates you? It's just about anything. Just, Especially uh, when I was dieting, you know, it was real hard. Oh, because you're low you're carbs, low energy. Yeah, low I energy, low carbs. So any little thing would set me off. So I had to quit going in for a while. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> and, but that's a so lot. I, because I, I had a chief that uh, said uh, I didn't have to come to work. He, this is the chief that gave you the option of either being a cop or being Mr. Uh, no, no, bodybuilder? No, or no, no, this, this, that's a different chief. That's, that's the new chief that came in. The old chief told you you didn't need to go to work I because to you come. couldn't control your, uh, you were losing your cool? No, he told me I had to come to work because he knew uh, I, I needed total focus to, to get ready for a competition. Is that the last one or the, the prior one? The prior one, the oh, one okay. that hired me. The one that hired you. Mm -hmm, yeah. He said you don't need to come to work anymore. Mm -hmm. Once yeah. I won the Olympia. So what bothers you, though? I mean, you seem like you're the calmest guy when I look at you. I'm like, you're... No, nothing really bothers me. Yeah, you that's know, what I'm, I'm saying. I'm, I've always been low stress. And nothing really stresses me out, you know. I take everything with a, pretty much with a grain of salt, you know. Never let nothing get under my skin unless I'm dieting. <laughs> unless if you're dieting. <laughs> How are you doing right now with all the surgeries you've been having? Oh, I'm doing good. Yeah, yeah. That, that doesn't, but that doesn't bother me either, because I know eventually I'll get better if I just keep working hard at getting better. I know you said one time. Question was asked, how bad's the pain? You know, you said it's. I have a high t tolerance, so it's not, not so bad. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, Remember, I, I don't know if I mentioned it in the book, but when I herniated my disc, I yeah. kept working out. Are you telling yourself something? And I heard it something? pop out. I'm like, man, what was that loud noise? <laughs> Ronnie, what are you telling yourself to handle the pain, though? Is there like a formula you have here that we don't know about, or no? No, I just, uh, I just got a high tolerance for it, so it's not as bad as it would be for a person that didn't have a high tolerance. So I can deal with a certain amount of pain and not be bothered by it. Today is November, what is it, uh, 13th or 14th? 13th? Yeah. How's your pain right now, 0 to 10? Yeah, it's about like 3, 4. Oh, it's 3. It's yeah. 4. So it's not the 10 that it used to be? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So you're much better now? Yeah, I'm much, much better now okay. than I was before. Are you still driving? Are you able to drive? I you drive going to the gym? Everywhere. You going? I drove to Louisiana last a couple weeks ago. You drove to Louisiana from here? Mm -hmm. All good? All good, yeah. Okay. Even with, with my feet and everything being numb, I can still drive. Is your feet numb right now or no? Oh, it's, it's always. <laughs> it's always numb? Yeah. What is doctor saying the progress is going to happen with you? Uh, it's going to be numb forever. Forever? Yeah. What do you think about that? Uh, oh, well. <laughs> That's it. Because I just had to deal with it, huh? <laughs> I, I tell you, another person can't, can, if another person had uh, what you, the man upstairs definitely chose the right person for this pain. Yeah, exactly. Because I don't think it's going to be... Uh, uh, made the body right for it, though. <laughs> made the body right for it, that's right. <laughs> made the body right for it. How, how much of the pain, I know uh, y y when I see you, y when people ask you the question about what would you have done differently, et cetera, et cetera, it's like, you know, I, the only thing I would have done differently is what? I think I could have pushed for five or six, right? Yeah. The 800 mm -hmm. squat, because that seems to stay with you mm -hmm. because that was something that was very important. Yeah, so to I, do that. I can still remember when I put that weight up. Yeah. 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 Look, too easy. First thing I said was, man, that was light. Yeah, <laughs> and I was for real about that too. So if you, so yeah. I even tried to go a little bit heavier, go a little bit further down on the second one, and it was still like. The reason why I went two because I, I had deadlifted it, and it was heavy. <laughs> it was real heavy, and then I thought about it. I'm like, wait a minute, squat and deadlift is two different lifts, so. Deadlift is pulling off of the floor, you know, you got all that gravity down there. But squatting is way up high on your back, so there's not as much gravity. So of course it's going to be a lot easier. But I didn't, I didn't rationalize mm -hmm. that before I did it. So at that time when you felt you could have done it five or six times, what do you think you could have maxed at that time once? Max, probably like nine. You think you could have cracked nine at that time? Yeah, Ooh. yeah. Easy, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. 800 was pretty light. And it's pretty light. <laughs> I can't describe how light it was because, you know, I, I, I guess I was so fired up too, you know, and I'd gotten stronger since I did the 800 pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because I had that herniated disc this whole time. But it had gotten to the point where, you know, I, I, I had got the strength back in everything. And I was getting stronger year after year after year. The older I got, the stronger I got. So when I, when I deadlifted 800, <laughs> it was like 01. When you so deadlifted two years, 800, you were old, uh, It was 2001, 01. yeah. So in 2003, I got a lot stronger. Mm. And I didn't take none of that into account, you know, because I was just thinking, man, when I deadlifted, that was heavy. <laughs> do you, so, do you, have you ever spoken to the world record holder for deadlift or for squat? No, no, never. You know who they are, or you don't follow what the number is? I don't follow it. Do you kind of have an idea what the number is? Yeah, yeah. So you know what the record is? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so idea. you do know it. Yeah, yeah. What do you do think that. about that number? Like, I, what does I, that do I, to I, you? I could have got there. You think you could have gotten there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That competitive, where for yeah. you, it's like you could have gone to a number yeah, like I mean, that. Yeah, I, I, I would have had to train for it, though, you know. I never would, trained for strength. Would your training would have needed to change? It would have been different, yeah. It would have okay. been different, way different what I was doing. So I used to train for body, uh, uh, powerlifting, powerlifting yeah. when I was in high school. What would have had, what needed to change? Well, I, I, you don't do as many reps. And you don't work out as often. So you got a lot more rest. And you can eat a lot more f fatty foods to give you strength. <laughs> so you can't stay your, your run at 2%. <laughs> uh, uh, you know what, when I, yeah, yeah, I was 2%. I get Remember, it, I was five weeks out from the Olympia when I, when I deadlifted 800. But so what I'm, I'm saying I'm, is to, to hold the world record, like the one that 1,200 or something, whatever, the number 1,254, to hold a number like that. 
I'd be had to be way up there in percent. Okay, so you, you so what I'm saying is at two percent it wouldn't work. No, 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 it, okay. it's not going to work. What's the two. reason for that? But what's the reason why that would need to be higher? The the, the more carbs in your body, the the more strength you're going to have. See, I'm I was always on low carb and, and stuff, you know. And it would so I, I had low, low, low amount of strength of strength in my body. Ronnie, that's crazy. So man. if I could, you know, just train and eat for powerlifting, it would have been a different story. <laughs> so the squat record is by Dave Hoff, 1273.2. Yeah. I could have got that. You could have got that. Yeah, yeah I could have got that. And then the world record for deadlift. Uh, that close, anyway. You think you could have gone to 12? I could have I got to 12, yeah. What was I more important? Eight, easy, huh? What was more important? Being an eight-time Mr. Olympia? Don't even compare. <laughs> Or being a world record hoarder in squat and deadlift. Don't even compare. Why not? This right here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got it. I got it. Because if it wasn't, you would have gone the other route. Exactly. And deadlift is 1102 by Eddie Hall. Yeah, that's, yeah. You would have got that as I well. I would have got that too, yeah. Which would be easier for you, the squat or the deadlift? The squat. The squat. Yeah. Easier than the deadlift. Yeah. Interesting. And you've never met these guys, Eddie Hall or Dave Hoff. Mm -mm. Okay. Now, now, what they're doing is, Amazing now. You gotta, that's, that's heavy. <laughs> to put up numbers like that. Yeah. yeah. So that was amazing. <laughs> you know, you said yourself where, you know, you did the 800 pounds with a herniated disc. Uh, uh, you had done the surgery or you had gone through that a couple years prior to that? No, I never had the surgery. While you were competing, you never had the surgery? Mm -hmm. no, okay. I, I talked so, myself out of it. So They tried to do it, though. But they didn't. Okay. You, you are so consistent in saying that you don't believe the heavy lifting that you did was the reason for your health and your back issues. You're saying that's not it. That's not it. And not you're saying it till today. Yeah, yeah, that's not it. Look at Dorian Yates and Lee Haney and all these other guys. I just, just got a bad, run into a bad surgeon, basically. But Dorian wasn't doing as heavy as you were doing. Dorian actually yeah. talks about the fact that what allowed him to not have your kind of pain is because he didn't go as heavy as you did. He said that in an interview that he would go heavy, but not at your level. Yeah, but I don't, you look at those power lifters though, look how heavy they lift, you know. I, I know for a fact that uh, it wasn't the heavy lifting that did it. Ronnie, I got a father <laughs> whom I admire, he's my hero, okay? He's the most stubborn man I know in my life, yeah. okay? It's one of the reasons why he does well, because for him, if he wants to figure something out, he's going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. You can't change his mind yep. at all. <laughs> How much of what you're saying is your level of stubbornness to not want to blame that because you love the game so much? And how much of it is actual, real, methodical research from doctors and people that say, this is not the case why you have all these issues, health-wise, with your back? Uh, I, I can say that because... When I when I retired, I didn't have any any issues like this for a long time. It, it, it didn't happen to to the surgeries. You know, I walked around without pain or nothing for a long time. Now, all of a sudden, I started having surgeries, and you know, that's when it all this happened. Didn't you say like on one of the last Mr. Olympias you did while you were on stage, you were in pain? Yeah. Yep, I was in a lot of pain. What what kind of pain? I had that herniated disc pain. That's the pain. Yeah. And you still don't think that's due to the weights you were pushing? Well, uh, you know what? See, I hurt my back in college. I hurt my back in high school. So I, 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 I mean, I, I've had a lot of back issues for a long, long time. And uh, so I can say that, you know, being athletic kind of maybe contributed to it. But not to this level that that you know where I can't walk and stuff like that. And all that came from the surgeries that weren't done right. Cause I I went to two different surgeons. Uh, for one time I was seeing this one surgeon, and I'm I mean every time I had surgery, it was the pain got higher and higher every single time. And I'm like, what's going on? Something right. So I let another doctor look at my <clears throat> at my charts and stuff, and he's like, "Man, this guy's messing you up." <laughs> like what? He's like, "Yeah, you need to see a different guy." So I went and saw a different guy, had surgery under him, and no pain after surgery. So I'm like, oh, "Okay, 
That, that's what it was. Was he ever held accountable or no? Was there a way to measure that maybe it was on him or was it just where you were at with your body and your back? Well, to be honest with you, uh, I, I did hire an attorney to uh, look at everything and she kind of agreed that uh, it was what he was doing because she uh, does this for a living, you know. Mm. She, she knows, she went and got all my records from, you know, day one and saw the pattern, you know, of how things progressed in the wrong way. Is this the doctor that's in the documentary or no? That's a mm -hmm. different, that is a doctor mm -hmm. that's in the documentary. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I could see while you were laying there and you had your whole, you had your whole th thing on and you didn't seem too comfortable mm -hmm. with it going. Like I could tell in your body language there was some doubt in you when I was, you know, when it shows in the video. Yeah. It was a lot of doubt. <laughs> a yeah, whole cause, lot. Because uh, the, the what? The, uh, two of them broke? Is it how many of them broke? The three. Three of them broke. How is that possible, Ronnie? And, and one broke right out of surgery. I went in surgery. He had just prepared the broken ones. Yeah. And I came out, and the nurse was like, turn over so I can change your bandage. This is right out of surgery. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they take your recovery first, you know, and you're in there for a couple of hours, so your bandage had a <laughs> chance to soak up all that blood, so she wanted to change it. And as soon as I turned over for her to, to look, pow, it popped right there. Mm -hmm. from just for me, just turning over. I didn't, I haven't done anything, just right out of surgery and turned over. And when that, when that <laughs> screw snapped, it felt like my back snapped in half. You felt that pain? I felt it. <laughs> I felt that pain. I felt it was, it was so excruciating, I didn't even want to move again. And when I moved again, it snapped again. I'm like, this is not happening. <laughs> How much after that was there the next surgery? Like when that happens, where they're like, okay, we got to take you back in and start looking at it again. Well, nobody thought that had happened like that. It wasn't until, you know, I I went for my follow-up that we found it, saw it, two weeks later. And then when did the next procedure happen? About a week later. <laughs> so three weeks later <laughs> after the procedure, they did another one. Exactly. And then when that happened, you still didn't have recovery, you're still not feeling good. Mm -mm. At one point did you say, I'm just done with this doctor, I'm moving on? Uh, I, I, too much pain to say that. <laughs> too much pain. No, no, meaning yeah. at what point did you say, I'm not coming back to this doctor, I gotta go find oh, a new oh. one? You know what, I, I, I let my, my best friend's a neurosurgeon, and uh, he, he was the one referring me to these guys. Oh, got it. So he, like, man, something ain't right. <laughs> let me look at your, your, your charts. So the recommendation came from somebody you actually trust. It's a friend yeah, of yeah, yours that friend recommended. Of me, yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. He wouldn't, he wouldn't uh, steer you in a bad direction. No, your like best one of my so, best friend. Yeah, yeah, so this is, this is the doctor. So you did try to, uh, pers so uh, Ronnie, who else in your uh, stature has gone through the physical challenges that you have faced uh, uh, post-competing? Anybody else? Mm, that's nobody. Uh, nobody. I don't think nobody. Ed Corney had some issues, but he never had it at your level. Yeah. And it was more later on that it's, it had some issues. So no one at your level. No, no. Is no, that no. why you say in your mind that you don't think it's the heavy weight, heavy lifting that you did? Mm -hmm. So Ronnie, who else that's a Mr. Olympia even lifted exactly. close weights at your level though? Who was lifting heavy like you? I know Cormier was very heavy when he would, he was yeah. known for being strong, but at your level, who was strong Nobody. at your level? Nobody. So how close were your competitors Different. to you? Uh, not close at all. <laughs> can, you, can you can you can you can you give us some numbers so we can't have an idea? Like if you're deadlifting eight, and you're squatting eight, who's the who's the second highest that's winning Mr. Olympia? Uh, Jay Cutler. What was he pushing? Do you know what Jay was pushing? Five hundred on squat. Mm -hmm. he, so he never went to seven, mm -hmm. not six. Mm -hmm. And you still don't think it's the heavy weights you push? No, I'm genetically gifted to do that kind of stuff. <laughs> Not everybody is genetically gifted for strength, you know. So I just happen to be genetic gift for strength and bodybuilding. Did you ever in your mind <laughs> so I'm feel, a different beast. Do you think, you, do you really believe like maybe, did you ever get to a point of thinking you're like a superhero type of person? Maybe you are like uh, that's an anomaly? How I, that's how I felt when I was in the gym. Okay. I hey. felt like I was Superman. It's funny you say that. nothing I couldn't do. 
Got it. Where you felt like I there's felt nothing like you that. couldn't do. Yeah, I actually felt like that. I felt I could be injured. Sure did. Do you think that never it, crossed my mind not one time while I was in the gym of being injured? Never. Because I was so strong and I was so in control. So I'm like, I, this stuff can't hurt me. I'm gonna do what I want to do. That's why I, you know, that's why I did that 800. That's why I did that 2300 pound leg press. You, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta have it right mentally first to even just get up under that kind of stuff. Cause I think about now, I wouldn't even get under 300 pounds now. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to. No, no. What could you? Uh, maybe 100. Maybe 100 today. Maybe, maybe. So, so, so you thinking like you're Superman and you thinking like you're untouchable, do you think that created some blind spots or no? No, 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 no. Cause my, my, you know my, what I'm strength, asking? my, yeah, my strength was real. You no, know. I'm not asking that. Oh. Do you think uh, thinking you're untouchable and you're Superman-esque, because that happens to athletes, that happens to boxers, mm -hmm. that happens to people that make it to your level. I'm not talking like, to your, your level is not 1%. Yeah. Your level is not 1% yeah, of 1%. Yeah, 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 I, I agree with you on that. Okay. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. well, you, you can, because exactly. let's face it, if you look at... Because I remember mean, when I lost. Mm -hmm. I, I was in shock. I didn't think I could be beat. No, when you're going in before they, I was, you know. before they announced that you were certain they're gonna call you. Oh yeah, like one thousand percent. Like I had been all those other times. You know, you kind of like you falling in some form of monotony after a while. Like, okay, I don't want this like seven, eight times in a row. Oh, what's what's nine? <laughs> That's yeah. how you're looking at uh -huh. it. Exactly. N not to be, not to be a, 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 you know, devil's advocate, but you were kind of standing sideways, and you were looking down, and Jay was to your left, and you didn't seem that confident when they announced it. Yeah, because I already knew I was going to be a second far away. How but did I, you know that? Oh, my girlfriend told me. What? She how, was how judging. Did, oh, she was judging. Mm -hmm. And she knew that. Oh, they already. T she already told you that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. You talking about Vicky or who? Yeah, I'm talking about Vicky. Okay. Yeah. yeah. She had told me I was going to get second. How did she know? Because she, she was judging. And she put you at second? Yeah. No, 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 no. She, she, she would, I don't think she was actually judge. She was at the judge's table. And, and she, she said they're whispering everything. that you're not as she was no, looking she at the score? It. She saw the score. Oh, she saw the score. And then right before you went up, she said, mm -hmm. they don't have you as winning? They had me. They, had, they got you second. Why would she tell you that? Like, to prepare me. Cause she know how she know. I got it. You know she's been with me for a long time. Oh, I mean, you listen, know Vicky, I Gates is, <laughs> Vicky, Vicky Gates. Vicky Gates is three time. I think she was second place three time in Mrs. Olympia. Mrs. Yeah, Olympia, right? Uh, exactly. I, I, she, she. I, I met Vicky. I don't know when. I met Vicky Gates in 1999. She, you just couldn't even believe when you would see Vicky mm -hmm. Gates. You know, yeah. at these expos. Uh, so mm -hmm. she told you you're not going to be winning. Yeah. When she told you that, what was the reaction when she said it to you? Well, I ain't had time to process it. Process it then. You know, Got it. so I'm, I'm, I'm still like, really? <laughs> you know, you, you like, really? <sighs> huh, how did this happen? So are you going, I'm going through, I'm going through all that phase right, right, right then. Yeah, because when I saw you on stage, I'm like, he doesn't look like the Ronnie that's, you know, right before the announcement is made. He's standing like he either knows something or he doesn't believe you know, he can win it. Because you, you know, like you would talk about early on, where a lot of people would say Flex had the physique, but he never felt he could beat you. And in, in an interview Palumba did with you, which he did a great job in that interview, and he was talking to you and Jay. Jay sitting to your right, you're sitting here, Palumba's here. And Palumba said, you know, the difference between you two is you never thought you were going to be Mr. Olympia. That wasn't like your dream. I want to one day be Mr. Olympia. Everybody mm -hmm. told you, Ronnie, you can yeah. be Mr. Olympia. Yeah, you can be exactly. world champ. You can be this. Like, I don't know. Maybe you really believe that? Okay, maybe I can't, right? And then on the other side, Jay's like, since he was a kid, people say, you got a great, you're going to be Mr. Olympia one day. So he was determined to never give up until he went up against you. And even he said when he beat you, he didn't beat you at your best. He beat you at a... You know, yeah, you're yeah. at 40 some years old when he beat you. Obviously, 42, yeah. 42 years old. It's not the 35 year old uh, no, Ronnie. No, not the prime. So, <laughs> so, but but the reason why I'm asking that question is, is because typically when you started winning, you would just stand. You're like, 
Yeah. The sense, no question. Yeah, I got this. So you knew, <laughs> you knew you weren't going to win because Vicky yeah. told you about. Mm -hmm. Wow. So after the announcement was made, and uh, Jay is celebrating, and he had a, he had a hundred people there at the uh, uh, in attendance. He had all his friends that were there, yeah. and they're screaming. His brother was also in the first. I think he was sitting first row or second row. Uh, what happened next to you when you lost? Because that's I don't even remember. You know, you go to a shutout phase, uh, certain things. Like, I don't even remember winning, you know, when I won the first one. I don't remember. As, after they called my name, I don't remember what happened for like 15 minutes later. Flex Wheeler! I had to watch the video to see what happened. And I'm like, man, all those guys came over to me <laughs> and said something to me. I ain't heard nothing. Wow. <laughs> I ain't even knew they I didn't even know they were there. I was so out of it, you know. Did Flex know anything that you were gonna win or Flex didn't? He didn't know? have a clue. Like remember I got a ninth the year before. I know you did, you got ninth. Believe me, I got all the stuff here. You got ninth. <laughs> The year before, and when you came back up, nobody was thinking you were going to be not first. Even, not even me. Right. To go from nine to first. So was I was thinking, man, if I could make top five, I'd be the happiest guy ever. So Flex That's was going goal. to know, and it's going to be his show. It's yeah. going to be his. Got it. That, that, that was his biggest downfall. What, what, what uh, you know, competitors, you go to sleep, and sometimes... Uh, you know, a, uh, 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 those who are perfectionists, I kind of put you in the perfectionist category because I don't think you're like a guy that wants to miss a beat. I think nope. you're the guy that <laughs> wants to, you know, you're seeking perfection. You don't want to be in a one person. A one person, you want to be the one of a kind, not yeah. one person. You want to be one of you and eight billion people around the world. Exactly. You want that kind of stuff. Like, let's just say MJ, exactly. Ronnie, you put certain people yeah. in that category, mm -hmm. right? Brady. Yeah. They all remember the the one loss or the one moment or the one victory you know like the most painful most rewarding is yours most painful the loss to jay and most rewarding the first to flex or would you say no it's something else uh something else what would it be my most painful was uh losing to uh lee priest at which one? I, the pro? The Iron 97, Pro? 997 Iron Man Pro. You, you got third, you got second, I think, right? Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the most painful. Yeah, because I, I quit uh, after that. Well, the next show I quit. Until I uh, quickly reminded myself I got a free membership to the gym because of this thing. <laughs> I don't want to lose it. <laughs> That's simple, man. You're simple, going back to your basic principles. <laughs> Yeah. Can't what give what that bothered up. you about losing to Lee out of everybody? <sighs> uh, he was a little guy. I so was a big guy. Losing to a five four guy was yeah, kind of yeah, kind of depressing. Now, I mean, losing to Jay uh, wasn't the thing about losing to Jay was just me losing, you know, because I had won eight in a row. So that 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 that, wasn't, that didn't even factor into the equation. And I, 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 I could lose to Jay any day. <laughs> Jay is a lovable guy. You know, I love Jay. <laughs> He's one of, the get, one of the best guys out there in, in the sport. Him and Kai and uh, Lee Haney, you know. So if that's the most painful with you and Lee, I think you lost five times that year to him or the year before to Priest. It was like five different events that had happened to So I was five times depressed. Five times <laughs> depressed. <laughs> so was it a real legitimate chance of you quitting or no? Was it legitimate like? No, you, no. It, it was, was just I, I frustrated. Did. Yeah, frustration. Okay, okay. Because yeah, yeah. I, I, you, everybody. It was, you, I quit for like uh, a minute. Okay. Got it. I said, I told my girlfriend at the time I was quitting. She like, boy, shut up. And I, and I, I was back in, in, into it after that. <laughs> Immediate. Immediately. Got it. And then the most rewarding. What's the most rewarding? Oh, nothing will be uh, winning the first one. Okay. You know, that was so unexpected. 
When, Ninth to first, you know. <laughs> that, that, no, I, I, that's puppy love. You know, when you lose your first time, yes. So, so when you when you look at this, do you do you look at any one of these and you say this is where I was flawless, the best ever? No, none of them. You no, don't look at it like no, that. No. So, what do you what do you think about when you see this? Uh, that look that don't look too bad. That's that it. Okay. <laughs> I could have been better. <laughs> you could have been better. Yeah. And every last one of them. Uh, just didn't do everything right, you know. If I'd have did everything right, I would have been better. Which was the closest call that you would say? Yeah, this one was a close call. I could have lost this one. Uh, 2001, which one is 2001? 2001 is... Probably that one, huh? Yeah, right there, that's yeah. the one. Yeah, that's the one that I, I got up that morning I was going to the hospital. That's and my nutritionist one. talked me out of it. Because I, I thought I was dying. Felt like I was dying. You ever, you ever had the feeling of, that you were dying? Panic attack. I felt like I was having a heart attack, but not dying. No, I felt like I was dying. Literally? Yeah. Why? Because I couldn't walk. I couldn't get out of bed. And I felt awful. Like, just think of the worst feeling that you could mm -hmm. have. And your whole body is aching and you're in pain and you feel awful. Mm -hmm. And you just feel like you about to you know, pass out at any minute. Because I had, I had fainted the night before. I did pass out. When I was putting on my tan, I fell backwards in the tub. One minute I was, I was wide awake, and the next minute I was waking up in the tub like, whoa, what happened? <laughs> Is it the body fat percentage being very low and you're just lightheaded, or you just kind of needed some water? Because I know he told you to drink some water, mm -hmm. and I kind of fixed a lot of it. Yeah, that fixed everything. That fixed everything. I drank a whole gallon. Were you on diuretics? Were you on anything? Di yeah, well. Okay. I guess. I don't know. I can't say for sure. He, he was my nutritionist and he gave me everything, you know, pretty much. He gave you everything pretty yeah, much. He, so. Yeah, he put, put some in a glass and said, drink this. And that would happen to Paul Dillette one time, right? When he cramped up on stage because he I had don't too think much. He was, I don't think he did what he, he was told to do. I think the nutritionist told him to do something. He's like... Oh, if I do it this way, it'd be that much better. So he just didn't listen to his he nutritionist. Just, he didn't listen. I got it. Yeah. How, how, how big of a role does your nutritionist play in winning? It's, you, you, you know how. Uh, like, had he not, had I not had it, I wouldn't have won. That big of a role. That big of a role. Was it the same one those eight years when you won back to back yeah. to back? Same, same one. one. How much trust did you have in his feedback? One thousand percent trust. I did every single thing he told me to do. Got it. Was he a nutritionist for multiple people or only you? Multiple people. Okay. Me, Flex. Flex is one that told me to go to him. Is this Chad you're talking about? Chad yeah. Nichols? Okay. Mm -hmm. So he was somebody that people were using. He wasn't yeah, somebody. Everybody was using Everybody was Chris, using him. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Th th that's, uh, that's interesting. So you got, so one, you got to find the right nutritionist. Two, you got to trust what he tells you to exactly. take and don't yeah. question it. Just, yeah. And Paul didn't. No, Paul didn't. And yeah. Paul was also going through Chad? Yeah. Interesting. These are backstories, you know, that no one knows about. Yeah. By the way, did anybody ever try to pull any kind of pranks on you backstage? That never. You, never? Never. Why not? Everybody's so involved and, I mean, it's so stressful. You got so much to remember and think about. You, you, you can't, ain't no time to joke around. Nobody played mind games like Nobody the way you hear an mind. Iron Man with no, what Arnold nothing. was doing to Lou Ferrigno? It, it, it's, it, yeah. You know, there's so much on the line, you know, back when they were doing it, you know, they wasn't making no money or nothing. This is our livelihood, you know. This is how we make our money. Got it. So everybody is, everybody is straight, 100, 1,000% serious. There's no joking around whatsoever. So Nobody's in, even in the mood to joke. Everybody's in a bad mood, too. It's your, no one's talking to each other back Nobody's talking to each other. We all in the same room ain't saying nothing to each other. Everybody's got their head down, either reading, uh, uh, thinking about what they got to do once they get out there on stage. Nothing. Nothing. You know how sometimes in wrestling they say, uh, one of the wrestlers who's a world champion, he says, I mm. hug my opponent to see no. how much, would you guys no. hug to no, see how no, hard, no. you know how. Nobody's making no contact, no, no, no talking, no nothing. Not even, hey, Ronnie, how you no, doing? How's family? Nothing, nothing Come, like Not that. even flex your boy. Not even flex your boy. Everybody's game face, like. Oh, we we getting, we going to war with each other. Did you ever have any kind of uh, altercations with anyone on stage or backstage? No, or never, no? never. I know sometimes you guys do the elbows. The Jay one time shot an elbow at you, and you guys kind of went back and forth. I don't even remember. <laughs> 
I don't even remember. Uh, I never even thought about that kind of stuff, you know. You know, of course, everybody jockeying for position, so we shoving each other around right. on stage, yeah. But you're not even you're thinking not, about You're not thinking about who doing it or, or what. But you weren't even you weren't even a temperamental guy. You were not a fighter in high school. It's not like you no, lose no, your no. cool or anything. No, you're never, a pretty chill no, guy, no, easy going no. guy. I never even had a fight in high school or college. Ever. Ever. You've never had a fist fight. Never. You've never had a fist fight. Never. You've never punched somebody in the face. Never. Not even as a cop. No. Well. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> let's, not, let's not go too far. Let's not go too far. <laughs> Someone did get punched in the face. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. I got tears in my eyes, man. That's funny. So, but what I'm saying is you're a pretty calm guy. Yeah, yeah, so, pretty yeah. calm. So, yeah. you know, I'm looking at all your victories. I mean, at the Mr. Olympia, when you competed from 92, you placed 16. Mm -hmm. And then in 93, you're out. I didn't qualify. You didn't qualify because you didn't have, yeah. And I didn't make top three in, in show. And then 94, you're back and you compete. This is the one that Yates wins. So Yates first, then it's Sean Ray, LeBron, Delette fourth. Oh, wow. Okay, Cormier mm -hmm. sixth, Porter fifth, El Sombati seven. Munster is ninth, and then Aaron Baker is 12th, and then you're 15th place, and you got $1,000. Now, when you were given this massive check of $1,000, what would you do? Oh, uh, man, I was the happiest guy ever. <laughs> <laughs> we literally I, I went out and bought a big screen TV. <laughs> <laughs> and you remember it till today with $1,000. Yeah, yeah, of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> then you go 11th, but 11th, it says you got no money, though. They, they didn't pay money on the, uh, in the uh, 1995, or yeah, they did? they, they did. Still a small amount, though. Yeah. Nothing crazy. Yeah, probably another thousand. And in 96, you win uh, your six. You beat Cormier. And was Jean-Pierre Fuchs anybody that you felt like you saw? Because he's a big guy. Was he somebody where you said, this guy can be a threat or mm -hmm. no? Yeah. You did see him like yeah. that. Yeah, I did. Yeah, because Jean, Jean to big. me, had a, yeah, he, he was big. and thick. That's, I, I remember that as well. So... Any any time with Delet was Delet any time a threat to you? Were you like Delet maybe somebody I need to go through or not really? Yeah, yeah, same same with same, Delet, same thing yeah. with Delet because yeah. I would figure you guys are the big mm -hmm. boys, you yeah. know. So then in '97 you place ninth, you go from sixth, you drop off to ninth. So now Cormier and Fuchs beat you. Lee Priest, your best friend, beats you. Lee right? beat me in that show. Lee beat you in that show. He's sixth. What? You don't remember? In 97, he beat you. He's six. You're ninth. I blocked everything out. I, <laughs> I blocked <laughs> everything out. <laughs> By the way, this is the one that El Sombati should have won, right? That a yeah. lot of people say 97. Yeah. Uh -huh. his, is, is he somebody that when you saw it, you said, this is an impressive, like, yeah. were you fully impressed by yeah. El Sombati's physique? Yeah, I was. Mm -hmm. Would you put him, like, yeah. peak big guys, like, yeah. even more impressive at his peak than uh, Dorian Yates? Yeah. You, you put uh, El Sombati yeah. head of Yates as impressive? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. That's a big statement, Ronnie. Yeah, but you, you wasn't there. You, you didn't see him. I'm like asking you for you oh, to yeah, say yeah, because yeah, from yeah. your perspective, yeah, that's yeah, a big statement. Yeah, from my perspective, yeah. That's, that's what I saw. Wow. Yeah, I thought he should have won easy. I remember in an interview one time, he said he hated the gym. Like, he wasn't the Ooh. guy that liked it. El Sombati. El Sombati says he would go to it. Flex said that same thing, too. Yeah. He says he didn't like the gym, but he would go to it because... He was also very technical and data guy, and you know, uh, you yeah, know, he's he, smart, he, real smart guy. Did you ever very, have any interaction with Somebody or no? You best, one, of, one of my best friends. Oh, Somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I talk to him all the time. How was his personality? Nicest guy you ever want to meet. El Somebody. Nicest guy ever. Wow. How about uh, Yates? You, Yates and you had relationships? No, no, I never talked to him. You guys never spoke mm -mm. at all. No. Him not reaching out to you, you never reaching out to him. Mm -mm. Is it is it etiquette in the world of Mr. Olympia where you win, the guy prior to you sends you a call and says, "Hey man, no, congratulations." No. That's not etiquette in no. Mr. Olympia. Period. No, not period. Not yeah, okay. Yeah. So so okay. That's that's interesting. So then ninety eight, you win. You go from ninth to first. You're shell shocked. Yeah. And then from there you go beat Flex again next to you. Cormier's now third. Lavron's fourth. Sean fifth. El Sombati six, and then Dexter Jackson is kind of coming up. Yeah. And Dexter's got a Flex Wheeler-esque type of a physique, except mm -hmm. Dexter got one. Flex didn't <laughs> pick one up. Then your first, Lavron is now second. How did you view Lavron's physique? Because to me, Lavron's physique was out of this world as well. Yeah, I feel the same way. What's the What's the biggest difference for you from Kevin and Flex's physique? Flex had better shape. He had better shape. Yeah, I think Flex had better shape than me. 
He just didn't have work at work ethic. Got it. Yeah. And uh, he didn't have uh, dedication to the game. Yeah. Flex told me he <laughs> he work out and go to strip club. So he had a dedication to women at least. He yeah, yeah. I work out. I'm going to work. <laughs> are, you in, are you in contact right now with Flex? Yeah, my best friend in the world. How's he doing, by the way? Uh, he, he's doing okay. He's hanging in there. He got a real, real, real nice attitude about losing his leg and everything. I'm like, shoot, dude, I lost mine four years ago. Mm. <laughs> I know Dennis James started a GoFundMe, by the way. Oh, he did? I don't know. You, you, did you hear about it? Is it Dennis Jim? Somebody started to go for me. Did you see that? Paul, can you look it up to see who it is? Because if somebody did, to, I'd like to put the link below if somebody did to create a awareness to go board. And put some money in there. Yeah, if you, if you got that, I just would put the link I mean, below. I've been, mean, I mean, meaning to go see him too. Flex? Mm hmm. Yeah. And you know what's crazy about Flex? Everybody likes him, respects him, and views him as one of the greatest bodybuilders. Ever. Ever. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah, me too. You put him there as well. Yeah. What was LeVron's strength when you looked at LeVron's? He, Kevin. He, he, he had everything uh, except, you know, he, he just missing some legs. Legs for yeah. Kevin? Yeah. Okay. So, so let me ask you, when you look at some of the stuff today, like when you look at some of the new guys that are competing, uh, what do you think about when you see these guys? These are some of the new guys that are competing versus your era. Uh, 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 <laughs> I don't see it. Really? <laughs> Meaning they wouldn't be able to compete in your era at all? No. No, they wouldn't make the top five. Did, did you hear what Yates <laughs> said about Brandon Curry or no? No, I didn't hear. What did he say? You seriously didn't hear what I, Yates I said about it? No, I don't really keep So up Yates was sitting right here just a <laughs> month and a half ago, I want to say, something like that. And Yates said Curry wouldn't have placed in the top six in his era. Brandon Curry, this physique, he definitely wouldn't place in the top six. He wouldn't place he in, wouldn't the place in, the in the top six in the nineties? No. He says Curry in your meaning in the era that he came prior to you and you I came afterwards. I kinda of agree with that. You do kinda of agree with him? Yeah. Do you and Yates typically agree on things? No, I don't. Okay, I don't so this, is a, this is a first where you and Yates agree. That's pretty interesting. And wh wh what's the biggest thing when you, when you see that where you say it's not at our, what is the biggest thing? Because you were late Conditioning 90s. Conditioning is not the same. Look at those guys. I mean, nobody looks like they've been on a diet, like a real diet diet. How do you, you know? judge that? What are you looking at? What's your eyes looking at, honestly? What's your eyes looking at? Because to nobody me, in, don't, nobody really looks in shape, you know? <laughs> nobody really looks in they shape. They look okay, you know? <laughs> wow, okay. You, you think so? No, well, you, you, you got to realize, I am, I, am not, I am not in the world to, to see it, but f when you look at it from this perspective, you kind of look at these guys saying they look, they look good. They look okay. <laughs> but not to, your, not to your level, huh? Yeah. You put them next to uh, me, Flex, Kevin, and, and Sean, guys like that. You're like, like, whoa, it's a big difference. <laughs> who do you, who do you, any of the guys you faced? Who do you oh, think they would going to beat none of the guys I faced. So, so let me ask you, <laughs> could Nasser beat all these guys? Uh, easy. <laughs> right, you're having too much fun with this one. <laughs> they, they're not in the same class with him. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the same class as... way up here. They way down here. <laughs> Sean Ray, same way? Sean Ray is way up there. <laughs> Look, Kevin, same way. Flex, same way. So same Flex would have beaten these guys. Oh. They would have been like 10th in Flex. Oh, you're even going above that. <laughs> Do you think it's because of the distractions it's a, it's a, they have it's a, today? It's an era. It's a different era. Do you think because they have more distractions today? Or no? no, no. It's just not the level of discipline that you guys have. Yeah, yeah. It's a different era, you know. Everybody competes on a certain level. So they looking at everybody else and like, well, they not that good. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be just like them. I don't like have them. to bring yeah, it at I that level. Yeah, I don't have to bring it at I that level. It. So back then, back when I was competing, everybody was like, whoa, man, you, you gotta be in shape. You gotta be in condition to compete against these guys. So I gotta take it to another level. But Ronnie, you would put Phil, Phil at the level of Phil here, oh, yeah, at Phil, the level yeah, of you yeah. guys competing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, yeah, so yeah. Phil was competing during your era. He would be competition yeah. for you guys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But by the way, who are your top five uh, bodybuilders? If you were to say 
physiques-wise, where you say top five best Mr. Olymp best bodybuilders of all time, who's on your list? See, I got Arnold, I got Lee, I got uh, Phil, uh, Flex, and uh, Kevin. Ahead of Dorian? So Dorian's not your top five? Uh, well, well, in my top five? See, like you I wouldn't put Dorian ahead of Flex? No, no, I got, I got Flex ahead of me. <laughs> got it. Would you, would you put Dorian ahead of Kevin? No. Is it because you like Kevin or is it because you're talking physique oh, to physique? I'm going physique. I'm going physique, shape and stuff. You put in Kevin ahead of Dorian. I, like, I, I, I love Kevin's physique, the way it was shaped and stuff. Interesting. And the way he posed. I, I loved everything about Kevin. So if, if that's your five, who's your Kevin, six? Six. Mm. So you said Arnold Sean Haney. Ray? Did I put Sean? No, you haven't said Sean no, Ray. Sean, yeah. So Sean ahead of Dorian. Man, I, I, I like Sean a lot. I, I, I even, I like Sean so much. You know my, the, the routine I use for my uh, uh, 98 win? Mm -hmm. that, that was Sean's routine. I, I put in a tape of Sean, and I did every pose he did, pose for pose. So some stuff he could he did that I couldn't do, so I would hit like most muscular. Mm. <laughs> like I, I can't do that one, so let me throw something else in there. That's yeah. pretty. I mean, the way you're you're putting it. I mean, that's some. Uh, uh, that's some. Uh, <laughs> Jay, I got is, I got Sean my all time best. Yeah. Is Jay Cutler top ten in your list? Yeah, yeah, top ten. Yeah. Top ten. And during yeah. your your top ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But top. just not top five. No, not top five. Any crazy person that never won that you you really were impressed by? Yeah. That you would who? Uh, Aaron Baker. Aaron Baker? Yeah. Wow. Aaron Baker and I met 15 years ago. I was real he, impressed with Aaron. Aaron Baker, I saw him one time at uh, Century Club. I mean, that's I'll a never forget the first time I saw Aaron. I thought he was a, a superhero. <laughs> he looked like Aaron one. Aaron Baker was. And he, dressed, he was Batman, actually. Yeah. He came out and did a Batman routine. I thought it was, a, it was actually the best thing I've ever seen. You still keep in contact with Aaron or no? I haven't seen Aaron in 10 years, I think. Okay, got it. I don't even know. Is he still alive? <laughs> I think he's a priest. I think the last time I spoke to him, he was talking about God. I oh, think, okay. but that was 13 years ago. I don't know. Mm -hmm. He may be doing, I've seen a lot of people go from priest to, you know, doing other things. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm just going to leave it at that. So, so, so let, me, let me go a little bit more. Let me go with this, okay? Uh, you said Arnold's in your top five. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You look at this, what do you think about it? You and Arnold. <laughs> Well, I'm in a lot better condition, but Arnold has got so so big and got got so much shape, you know, so, so greater shape, you know. Greater shape. Yeah. So l let me ask you, Arnold with a nutritionist like nutritionist like Chad Nichols at six two and a half. Arnold would have been by far the best bodybuilder ever. <laughs> Nobody even touch him. You're not even holding back saying that. No, no, no. Look at that shape. <laughs> I got it. Look at that chest. Nobody got that even in the day. He got the biggest chest ever, and if he'd have had our our, our, our stuff, oh, he would. I, I look like a little boy standing next to him. If he had Chad, if he had your nutritionist. Yeah, yeah, and and the technology. Yeah, he, he'd uh, he'd have been by far the best thing ever put out on stage. No one close to him. No one close to him. Lee Haney's not close to him. No. You're no, not close no, to him if no. he had a Chad Nichols today. No. That's the highest level of compliment you can give well, to him. Well, look at that, though. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. There ain't nobody got nothing like that no more. That's respect for you to be able to give it the way you do. What do you think about when you think about this? Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's me learning the game right there. <laughs> yeah, that's me learning. I wouldn't even that good condition right there. What year is that? Couldn't tell you. I don't know what year that is. I think that's like 06 maybe, somewhere in there. So you can see I'm a lot harder here than mm -hmm. I am here. Mm -hmm. yeah. he's, a, he's a dreamer. When you see this guy, you think about a guy that uh, is still maybe doubting himself that he could win it one day, or no, no, no. he's a pretty confident this guy. Is just, this just yeah, me having fun, not even thinking about you know being great. Or this being is just good. you're having. You're not planning on being no, the greatest no, bodybuilder no, or no, at not, all. The king. I'm, I'm just doing this for for the free membership. Still for the free member because you're not yeah. even a womanizer. You, you, mm -hmm. you mentioned all these women in your book, which is pretty interesting, but you're not a guy that was 
you know, you had uh, uh, chasing squirrels all the time, all that. That was not really your game. No, no, because I just get, got on the police department, so I'm still learning the police uh, job. And I'm still trying to learn this thing, too. So I got two things that I'm trying to learn right now. Once I learned them, I was, I was a killer. What do you think about this? <laughs> I see that now, and it's kind of shocking to me. <laughs> this doesn't even make sense. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what I be saying. Like, man, I didn't know. I, I had no idea how, how I looked until I saw the pictures. What would you rank your back against everybody else? Would you say you can go pound for pound against anybody when it comes down to your lats? Your yeah, back? yeah. I think with yeah, that right there, yeah. <laughs> do, do, you, do you think your number one, you know how some is, you said Arnold chest, some is legs, some is this. What do you put your first? Is it gun? Is it your biceps? Where, where would you say you were superior over everybody? I would say my back. Your back. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah. This is a uh, Ronnie. I'm having too much fun right so now. So much That's, on my back. You did on your back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about Joe Weider. So I, I want to kind of catch up a little bit on Joe Weider because uh, you had a chance to spend some time with Joe Weider, right? I think mm -hmm. one time you told Flex that Joe complimented me and that you signed with them. Right? When yeah. you signed with them. Yeah. How was that when Joe said, hey, we want to sign you? What was that like for you? Uh, that was the best feeling in the world. It was kind of like unbelievable. Why is that? Because I never thought it would happen. Uh, this, I, this was 98. You know, I've been in the sport for, uh, what, eight years, nine years already? You said this and is 98. Never, never even spoke to him. Never even said anything to him. And never said nothing to me either. And then you win, then they give the contract, or pre-winning they give you the, the say that? Pre-winning, pre at, at pre-judging, he was all over me. So they pretty much kind of had an idea. You're the one that's Joe winning. had an idea. It Joe was, had an was idea. all Joe. Got it. So there's Joe, a part of Joe was so confident, he gave me a six-year contract. No. And has that ever, ha had that happened at that time? No, or that no? ain't never happened. No one got a six-year contract. Nobody got a six-year. Did Flex sign with them or no? Yes, yeah, Flex was signed with them. So he was signed and you signed as well? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you got a six-year. I got a six-year. Was this the first time you got a taste of money or? First time I got a taste of money. I was, I was poor all the way up until today. And that happened? Boom. 34, 34 years old. Who are you dating? Are you with Vicky or you're not Vicky. with? You're with Vicky at that time. Yeah. By the way, how long were you and Vicky together? About six years. You, so that's a good time. You yeah. and Vicky were together for a good time. Good. Yeah. Okay. So then you start, you're like, you got the guy in your corner, the guy that built up, you know, the brand, the guy that Mr. Olympia, Larry mm -hmm. Scott, first one, I think 1965. And then mm -hmm. you got all these other guys that are coming up. When you got that, next for you, how much time did you spend with Joe? Was Joe calling you? Did you have time with Joe? Did you do photo shoots? Was he taking you out? Was he kind of taking you under his wing? Did you guys spend a lot of time together? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. How was Joe? Nicest As, guy I've ever met my whole life. Nicest guy you ever met in your nicest life? Nicest guy I've ever met my whole life. I would go see Joe. And he'd, first thing he'd say, let's go eat. You know how we are about eating. And then I would go over his house. He'd call his maids, put some food on. And I'd bring my friends around, like, let's feed, let's feed everybody. He treated me like he, he treated me. That he, he treated my friends like he treated me. He was nice to Everybody, nicest guy you ever want to meet. Wow. Greatest guy you ever want to meet. I still miss him today. Joe Weider. I sh yeah, I'd give anything to have him alive. Wow. See what bodybuilding, how much higher it would go, how much better it would be. It would be a whole lot better. If he was around? If he was around. So you don't think anyone's replaced him? Nobody cared like he did. He was madly in love with it madly in love with it, more than in love with it than I was. I listened to everything he said and did everything he said do, because everything he said do worked. I'm like, okay, he's smart, for real. Mm -hmm. He knows his stuff. He's intelligent. He's real, really nice to have so much money, you know. You think he'd be, you know, had this attitude like I'm better than mm -hmm, you. Mm -hmm. he, no, no, he wasn't no, like that. Not, not at all. Him mm -hmm. and Arnold the same. Arnold, Arnold, another guy, one of the nicest guys I ever met. What's the biggest difference between Arnold and Joe? Man, they they're the same. They're the same. I think Arnold takes after Joe. Wow. Now you, I mean Arnold, 
you think he had his attitude about you know because he got all this money and fame. He's just a normal, nicest guy you ever want to meet. I mean, I would take people in to meet Arnold, and he just talked to him like he knew him all his life. Mm. Hey, Arnold loves everybody. He's another one of the you know nicest guy in the sport. Is that is that a common consensus amongst everybody, or just you mainly? I don't know about everybody. <laughs> but that's your experience with I'm just him. going by what Because some people have said otherwise with Arnold, he was so competitive that he had a different side. Every, Maybe it's because of people he I'm faced. I'm like that too. Right, right. <laughs> well, I mean, for me, you got to realize I'm an Arnold guy. I, I mean, I've been, he went, we went to the same community college together. For me, I followed this guy's yeah. career from day one. Uh, but, but going back to Joe. Do, do you think when Joe died... The sport died. <laughs> you believe that? I do. You believe that? Mm -hmm. So what do you think is the future of Mr. Olympia? I don't know. I have no idea. I think it would be a whole lot better if Joe was around. I know, I know it would be a whole lot better if Joe was around. What would be different? Everything. Everything would be different. Level of competition, like you're seeing some of the physiques, yeah, it would be higher? Yep. Yeah. It, it would be, be higher, higher, be better. Money would be better. Everybody would be making a whole lot of money. When Joe was around, I was making a whole lot of money. When Joe left, shoot. <laughs> everything changed. Because people are not making the kind of money that no. when he was around. No, no. And when you say, you're, not, just, you're not just talking about the price. You're talking additional money from other places yeah. because of his contacts. Joe was and trying to get the sport mainstream. Hmm. You know, I was on... Jay Leno talk show and you know all these other talk shows. I was doing all that kind of stuff. Cause of Joe. Yeah, cause of Joe. And Arnold, you know, Arnold did a lot of stuff too. What, what do you think about what do you think about uh, uh, the current guys that are running the organization? Whether it's you know uh, uh, David Pecker, whether it's Jim Mannion, whether it's Dan Solomon. Are you, do you have a relationship with these guys or no? No. You don't know any one of them. No, no. Oh, so you don't know who Jim Mannion is, Dan Solomon is, or David Pecker? I know is. all of them, but you don't have a relationship with them. Mm, no, mm, none at all. They don't call you to no, say, "Hey, Ronnie." No, nothing. Have you ever nothing. have you gotten a call from these guys the last five years? No. no When's no. the last time David Pecker or Dan or uh, when I was these, competing. When you were competing. Mm -hmm. So after that, no Nothing. one's called you. Nobody's Is called. there an element of the Mr. Olympia brand that they take care of their former winners and mm -hmm. they... None whatsoever. Post Joe Weider, that doesn't happen well, anymore. Once you done, you you done. Was they Joe like that as well with those? No, you? no, Joe, Joe, no. no. The current uh, method Joe, is that Joe way. kept you uh, relevant, kept you around. Ronnie, that's a, that's, that's a big deal right there because let's just say I'm watching this here, okay? And if I'm a 16-year-old, let's just say I'm a 20-year-old you know, Jay Cutler, and I got a pretty good physique. I can one day run for Mr. Olympia. Mm -hmm. It's scary as hell to know that I'm going to put my body through what I need to put through, the PEDs, everything that I got to put my body through to go out there and compete. What am I doing it for if I know someone's not going to build me up? You don't know that. <laughs> you don't know that today. <laughs> yeah, you don't know do, that. Do you think there's anybody that could revive the Mr. Olympia brand like it no. once used to? No, no, no. You, you don't think no. anybody can do it today? No, no. Ronnie, you don't think anyone can be like, if, if let's just say these guys sold 51% of the brand to an Arnold or a Dwayne Johnson or somebody, you think a person, like somebody could revitalize it that loves the game as much as Joe did? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so yeah, you yeah. are like, if somebody like that, yeah, yeah. but if the current owner stays the way it is, it's not going to happen. Mm -mm. Got it. Well, I mean. You got to love it and you got to enjoy it. I tell you one You got to care about it. If you don't, it's all, it's all about profits, you know. It's all about profits? Yeah. Today or before? Uh, today. Yeah. Not before. Uh. <laughs> it's a love of the game. Today yeah. it's more about business yeah, than before. Yeah, it's more of a business. Listen, if anybody in the bodybuilding world is watching this, I would love to get Jim Mannion, uh, David Pecker, and uh, uh, Dan uh, over here to have a dialogue. I would love to because I actually love the game and I'd love to have a conversation with them. If they're entertaining, you feel free to get a hold of us. So. So let's let's continue with that with the with the with the bodybuilding side. I remember one time you said something. You said uh, bodybuilding is a subjective uh, judging is subjective, right? Because you can't really uh, like in boxing. If I knock you out, okay, I won, right? Yeah, in UFC, yeah. if I knock you out, it's over. I win the fight, right? Mm -hmm. In basketball, I score hundred, you score ninety nine. There's no argument. Yeah. I won the game, right? <laughs> exactly. Football, I win the game. Bodybuilding isn't. 
How much politics is involved in bodybuilding where you have to be careful on who the judges are? Or you never had anything like that to worry about when you're coming up? Uh, you know what, I, I always just consider myself uh, just being uh, concerned about the things that I can, can control. Or as the thing that I can't control, never worried about it. You never worried about no. it. Okay. But, okay, fair enough. So, so, so then my question goes to the next part, which is I always look at businesses as if I ran it or if I were to buy it. Mm -hmm. You know, I run a financial firm here. If I was to buy a Mr. Olympia brand or if I was to buy a restaurant that I'm sitting on with somebody, no matter what it is, I'm always looking at it from what can happen to improve this brand, mm -hmm. right? You said Joe was getting ready to make this commercial, right? Yeah. yeah. You're going on Leno. You're going this yeah. and Arnold's in movies. Hercules. No, Arnold's get. He's getting up. So that means attention's coming to Mr. Olympia, and then he starts Arnold Classic, and that's even more. Now mm -hmm. good things are going on over there, and people are kind of starting to say, "Oh, wow, this is pretty cool. I want to be a bodybuilding. I want to be big. Look at these guys, right?" Yeah. Do Do you think? You know, uh, uh, I mentioned this the other day. The fact that marijuana today has become. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, um, commercialized. It's no longer like, oh my gosh, that guy smokes marijuana. Right <laughs> he smokes weed over there. Oh my gosh, that guy's a drug. He's this. Today, it's kind of like, uh, you want to use it? You don't want to use it? It's up to you. What do you want to put in your body? Like do alcohol. What you gotta, <laughs> yeah, like alcohol, right? Marijuana's kind of become like alcohol. That's a good way of putting mm -hmm. it. Do you, do you think when you were competing, it was hush-hush to not say that you're using steroids, PED, or any of that stuff, versus today it's becoming more open than before? Yeah, yeah. Do you think that's a good thing to make it commercialized? Yeah, yeah. So we have to be more comfortable talking about the fact that everybody's on something that's competing at the highest level. Yeah. You were given a speech one time when you said, uh, one time Flex pulled you aside and said, hey man, what do I need to do to compete? And you said he introduced you yeah. to yeah. all this stuff, the PEDs, all that other stuff, and then you were able to start competing. How, how, how much do you think today's Mr. Olympia brand, like what strategy do you think for yourself they need to take to be able to make it so open to say, look, it's like taking uh, uh, things you want to take. Some of it could hurt your body, but it's up to the person that wants mm -hmm. to take it. You drink alcohol, it can give you liver cancer, it can give you a lot of different things, but if you want to drink it, it's yeah. at your own risk. If you want to smoke cigarettes, you can get, you know, uh, cancer, throat cancer, but it's at your risk. You want to yeah. smoke with, you want to do uh, 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 steroids or you want to do PED, it's at your own risk. Do you think they need to take that step? Do you, need to, do you think mm -hmm. they need to start talking about that? Yeah. I how think how so. do you go about doing that? If, you were to, if, you were, if you're sitting on the board of Mr. Olympia to be able to revise, uh, revive this uh, uh, brand, what's your approach? Well, I, I think if they uh, <clears throat> did the way I did it, you know, uh, I think it would be a lot better because... You know, I was doing everything, everything that I did was prescribed, and I had doctors and stuff, you know, m making sure everything was okay. Everything you used was always prescribed? Yeah, uh-huh. Doesn't matter what it was? No matter what it was, because, you know, the DA came in and started questioning everybody, and, you know, and like, what are you doing, what are you taking? So you had to be up front, you know, because, you know, the public, you know. <laughs> So once they did out all that, you know, I, I, I just followed, you know, the rules. So I, I went in, got a doctor, and uh, got prescriptions for everything, you know, because, like I said, DA was monitoring everything. And I made sure, you know, I would, did my checkups uh, and, and followed, you know, protocol and everything and just did it the right way. And, you know, and it was the best thing for me because, you know, Look at how I looked and what I went through, mm -hmm. and, and I'm still here and still doing fine and still doing great, except for the bad surgeries I went through, but everything else is all good. And so that's because I, I did everything the right way, you know. Got it. Yeah. So did you, I did wasn't buying stuff off the streets. That's and, the problem. So yeah, you're saying the issue is... black market stuff, not it. knowing what I'm getting. Everything I was getting was from the pharmacy, being prescribed by doctors, you know, keeping up with, with my progress. and. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going through all these blood tests and everything, making sure. At that I'm, time, when at you're that time, well, yeah, when I was competing. So I think if, if if it's done that way, you know, everybody can benefit. And but you know, <laughs> the sport is is not controlled in that kind of way. You so know, you think I, it needs I, to I be did it that way because you know I was kind of like forced to do it that way mm -hmm. once the DA got involved and came in. 
What year was that? When did DA get him, got involved? I want to say like, oh man, what year did they bring us all in? Is that the same time where Tom Platt's interviewed yourself, Baker, and all those guys, or is that the same era? You know when that they did right that after, and it was a it blurry? Was right out, yeah, it was right after that, right after that. Like maybe a year or two after that. So you guys were still uncomfortable to be able to talk. You yeah, had to kind of yeah. make the voice and yeah, all that stuff yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. But if you were competing today, hey, here's uh, what's going on. These are some mm -hmm. of the things I'm using. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree with you there because for me... People it, think I was doing way more than what I was doing. They, you were they, not. They think I, no, I wasn't doing no, none, nobody else wasn't doing, you know. <laughs> were you doing more than what your peers were doing or no? Uh, I, I kind of think we're all kind of like on the same level. Okay. You know, there's only so much you can do, you know, to where it's going to be effective, you know. No matter how much of something you take, you know, you, you look at these baseball players and all these guys, you know, they've taken stuff, but they don't look like bodybuilders and mm -hmm. stuff like that. You know, it's just like normal people. So it all goes back to genetics and stuff, too. You know, you got to be genetically gifted to do certain things. You know, yeah. I, I, I couldn't play baseball and probably not football and basketball either. <laughs> But I could be a pretty good bodybuilder. Mm. <laughs> Do you think, uh, like, uh, your opinion, I'm just curious, opinion-wise, your opinion on allowing it to be used in MLB, NBA, NFL, you think they should just kind of stop going through the PED side because these guys' body got to recover and this kind of helps? Like Lance Armstrong, you know, he got what he got and all of a sudden his entire credibility was shut. Do you think they just, just need to say, look, if you want to use it, use it? Do you think no, they, no, I no. think it should be a level playing field for everybody. everybody. So if I can't use it, you can't exactly. use it. Exactly. Or if I can use it, you can use exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. Are you comfortable with them making it legal for everybody to use it? No, no. Why not? How do you, why do you say no? <clears throat> because everybody is not going to do it. Everybody is not going to do it. Yeah. But in, but in bodybuilding, you have to do it if you're going to Yeah, win. exactly. So you see what I'm saying? But in baseball, you don't have to no. if I don't want to put myself no, through No, no. So no. because of that, you're saying it wouldn't apply to any other sport except for bodybuilding. Exactly. Huh. Okay. So even in boxing or UFC or any of that, you're saying no go. No go. Okay. So Everybody should be on the same playing field. What was the biggest difference you felt with steroids versus GH for you? It's pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so when one, you one, one doesn't really exist without the other. Okay. Got it. But it wasn't like one gave more. No, 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 no. Okay. No. Any side effects yeah. afterwards after all these years? No, like no. anything none. that you're doing blood today, you're noticing? None, none whatsoever. Your testosterone levels, yeah. you, everything is good. Mm -hmm. are, you, are, you, are you a believer of the new TRT movement with everybody that's, mm -hmm. you're yeah. fine with the TRT, yeah. certain yeah. people? Well, I believe in, you know, certain levels of tests are not going to be produced at a certain age. You know? Are not going to be produced at a certain age. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when you get to be like 70, you're not going to produce the same amount of tests you were doing at 25, 30. So it's good to take something to yeah. keep your levels high. Yeah, yeah. What are the benefits of having a higher testosterone it, level it, from it, your perspective? I've asked other people, but I'm curious to know what you'll say. Uh, I, I think it uh, just allows you to be kind of like younger. <laughs> it allows you to be kind of younger. Yeah, because, you know, you're back to uh, being... Uh, where you were when you were a certain age. Can I interpret that younger meaning you can at least do some stuff you used to in the bedroom? Like, is yeah, that what yeah, you mean? Okay, exactly. so that's a good interpretation. Okay, <laughs> I had to read into what younger meant. So I know you're pretty, uh, you know, uh, so, so that's, that's pretty interesting, you saying that. You know, to wrap it up, this is the last thing I want to ask you. Is I got some uh, speed round. I'm going to give you a name, and you tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. okay. I'll give you a name or topic. You first word that comes to your mind, just say whatever's on your mind. Oh, okay. Lee Haney. Uh, like one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. Eddie G. Robinson. One of the greatest coaches of all time. <laughs> Patricia. Patricia. Patricia High School Puppy Love. Oh. <laughs> yeah. One of the greatest loves of all time. That's cool. <laughs> How about middle linebacker Alonzo Johnson? I don't, I don't, I don't know him. He was a second round uh, middle linebacker that Eagles picked up, that you were a middle linebacker yourself. Yeah. You wrote about him in your book. You don't I did? Yeah, you did. You talk about Alonzo Johnson. He was the guy that was uh, drafted second round by the Eagles, 
and you were a middle linebacker. You don't oh, remember the name. I don't remember. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, then it wasn't that important. <laughs> no, it so it is what it is. <laughs> How about Brian Dobson? Oh, oh, one of the greatest and one of the smartest guys I've ever met. Wow, yeah. smartest guys you ever yeah, met. Yeah. Why do you say smartest? Because he recognized the talent in me that I, I never saw. He was smart for doing that. Yeah. Joe Weaver. Very Weedle. smart. Joe is uh, like uh, one of the greatest minds, smartest guys, and nicest guys I've ever met in my whole life. Kevin LeBron. One of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. Flex. The greatest bodybuilder of all time. So, <laughs> Chad Nichols. <laughs> Probably the best nutritionist I've ever met. Uh, Metrix. Metrix was okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. How about EAS? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yates? Yates is uh, uh, a great bodybuilder. Lee Priest? Great bodybuilder. Gunner? Great bodybuilder. Tom Platts? Great bodybuilder. <laughs> Susan Williamson? Oh, greatest love of all time. Greatest love of all time. <laughs> Best <cool>. love ever. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I got to tell you, man, I, uh, um, I really enjoyed uh, sitting down with you, and I, I feel the audience hopefully got a different side of you they haven't seen before <laughs> because I tried looking for something where there's a long-form interview with you where I can say, who is Ronnie Coleman? And I want to know more. <laughs> I'm hoping they got a little bit of it here because of your opinions. Ronnie, what are, what are some things that if, if somebody, if a fan knew that they don't know about, if they knew about you, they'd say, wow, that's pretty interesting. Is there anything that we don't know about you that we would be very interested to know? Uh, not really. Really? Because mm, I, don't, I don't keep a lot of secrets. You don't keep a lot of secrets? Mm. Everybody know I got eight daughters. Everybody know, uh, you know, pretty much I graduated from Grammy because everything is, you know, out there. Now. Nowadays, yeah. yeah. No, like, are you a politics guy? Are you, you have a favorite sports team? Do you, you know, are you a finance guy? Like, is there anything like that? Like, do you follow movies? Do you, what, what, any is I try to strange dabble. interest? <laughs> no, I try to dabble in a little bit of everything. Politics? Yeah. You follow politics? Yeah. Really? Yeah. What, what interest do you have with politics? Just the, uh, just the whole nature of the business. More the nature of the business, not mm -hmm. personalities. No, no. So you don't get tied down saying, I like this guy, I don't like this guy. You just kind of watch the games, yeah, yeah. how it's done. Yeah, how it's done. Are yeah. you a movies guy? Yep. Favorite movies? Every, every, every week. Every week you go to movies? Uh -huh. See, we just learned something, right? I mean, that's good. So every week you go to movies uh -huh. at the theater. Uh -huh. What's a good movie you've seen recently that you said I, I'd recommend it to other people? Uh, Terminator. You like Terminator? Yeah. I saw Terminator. Yeah. I thought it was good. Yeah. I thought it was interesting. And I saw the uh, Harriet, last movie I saw. What'd you think about that? I thought that was one of the best movies I saw in a long Harriet. time. Wow. Learned a lot. Learned a lot. What's your favorite of all time? Do you have some where you can watch it over and over again, or you, you don't have some like that? No, I haven't. No? Yeah. You're a horror guy, you're a comedy guy, you're an action guy? Action. Action? Yeah. Like uh, you like Arnold Terminator, movies, The Terminator? Arnold, Arnold Stallone, yeah. Are you is a, a love story yeah. type of guy, any no, romantic, I'm like you're, you don't watch Notebook uh, on Rewind? I don't, and, I don't, I've never seen Notebook. Never seen Notebook. Music? Wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't watch it if you paid me. <laughs> <laughs> How about music? What do you listen to working rap. on? Rap? Rock or rap. Uh, uh, do you have a favorite all-time uh, rapper? Uh, shucks. Tupac. Number Biggie. one? Yeah. Okay, Biggie. Two, who else? Jay-Z. Okay. Mm. Ice Cube. Ice Cube old school? Yeah, Snoop Dogg. Okay. I like all the old school guys. I don't like the new. I don't, I don't listen to the new stuff. Is there, is there a song you can put on repeat for like three hours or no? No. You're not that guy. So you no. have a playlist. I have a playlist. You have a playlist. Yeah. If you're going really heavy, what do you listen to? Uh, the guys I just named. Those guys? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Favorite sports teams? No. No. I, 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 I got season tickets to the Mavericks. I got season tickets to uh, the women's WNBA. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's a good season tickets to have to Mavs. They yeah. got a good squad. Yeah. Cuban and his team have put I've a had great a, team together. See, since 2001, so 18 years. You've had season tickets for 18 years? Yeah. Wow. And the girls just came out with uh, 
since they came out, I've had season tickets. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Ronnie, what business, what, what, uh, where do I find you? Obviously, we're going to put all the link of your social media, but anything you want to tell us about your supplement company, how it's doing? It's doing great. It's doing real good. Uh, every year, it gets better. Yeah. If there's a product that I, if I've never used any of your supplements, and you were to tell me, Pat, you got to try one of the products, what would you say is the first product I got to, I got to test you out with? Uh, I'm going to give you the protein. Ain't nothing but a peanut. Ain't nothing but a peanut. Yeah. So, uh, Paul, why don't we put the link below of ain't nothing but a peanut. So if guys want to go mm -hmm. try, we're going to put that below. And here's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. First two people that go share this interview on Twitter, tag me and Ronnie. We're going to send a copy of Ronnie's latest book signed to you. But it's the first two who do it. <laughs> you do it. Tag Ronnie. Ronnie's handle is going to be right here. Mine's going to be right here. We'll send you a signed copy by Ronnie. Uh, uh, for you to, I want, and by the way, when you send a tweet to us, it's not just share the link. I want to see what you took away from this interview, sitting down with Ronnie. <laughs> I know there's a big audience that wanted to hear you come out here, and then we'll put the links below to the book that you can order on Amazon. We'll put the link below to Ain't Nothing But a Peanut, you yeah. said, mm -hmm. and then all the other following social media links that he has. Ronnie, appreciate you for coming out, man. Oh, this was pleasure. a blast. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Had a good time. <laughs> yeah, I had a great time. Very cool. <laughs> You know, if you're watching this entire interview, odds are you're probably a bodybuilding fan. You're not going to watch the whole thing if you don't follow bodybuilding. And if you do follow bodybuilding, Ronnie didn't hold back. This is the longest. I was asking him, is this the longest long format interview you've ever done? He says, nothing's ever been this long for me to do it. And he talked about stuff. He wasn't like, I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to talk about that. So I actually want to hear from the people that follow the bodybuilding world on how you process his, his answers and his views on the way he looks like Mr. Olympia, relationship with Joe Weed, all these other things. So send me a tweet, at Patrick B. David, my handle, I want to hear from you. And then if you like this interview, I had another interview with Brandon Curry, that uh, is the recent 2019 Mr. Olympia, as well as Dorian Yates, who's a six-time Mr. Olympia. If you like these topics, you're going to love both of these interviews as well. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.